Hi guys, I'm Rob. Welcome to Didactics Online. Today we're actually going to talk about what is somatic dysfunction, how is it created, and what are some of the things we're looking for. So, in the osteopathic world, we have a, a mnemonic called TART. It's generally what we look for with somatic dysfunction. It stands for tenderness, asymmetry, restriction and range of motion, and tissue check texture change. It could be like a boggy or ropey tissue texture. Generally, that clues you in that something is going on in the area that we consider somatic dysfunction. So look at some of our other videos and they talk about diagnosing particular segments, but we're going to talk about what's actually going on there. Now, a lot of times I like to talk to my patients, clue them in on what I'm finding, how I'm finding it, and they always have questions for you. So one of the big questions patients will ask you is, so doc, you're working on me this whole time, you know, you're putting things back into place, how did I get like this? What can I do to not have these changes happen again? And people have a lot of varying opinions. One of the big things that you're going to hear out there, people will go, well, it's kind of a chicken or an egg type deal. You've got some real tight muscles. You do have some segments that are out of place. What's happening here? Are the muscles pulling them out? Are they having spasms because the segments are out of place? Let's just put it back and see what's going on. Well, I'm going to give you a little bit more information so you're going to be a little bit more equipped next time. So let's talk about the neuroreflexive properties of medicine, okay? So I have a couple things written up on the board here. We've got intrafusal muscle spindle, and we've got extrafusal muscle fiber, okay? So the muscle fiber is what you guys all know. It's the big muscles that you're going to see that are going to contract. The spindle, think of it as more like a receptor. So both of them lie right next to each other, okay? And the way the system works, whenever you have a stretch, the actual muscle spindle counteracts this by not letting your muscles go too far into the stretch, and you'll have this contraction. So your body can actually regulate this depending on what it needs. Let's say somebody threw a four pound ball at you, okay? I have a little bit of actual stretch and a quick contraction. You know, it's something my body's expecting nice and quick. So my whole neurologic system can be set up to where I don't have a whole lot of threshold and it's gonna fire fast. Let's say somebody throws a 15 pound ball at me. Whoa. I have a whole lot more of a stretch before that quick contraction. So your body can be set up to allow a little bit more give and take, and you still have a certain reaction before muscles actually tear. So you really have a lot of dysfunction when something happens to the system that you're not expecting. You know, all of a sudden, you know, say you're mountain biking, you hit a tree, or random balls hit you. You know, you don't know how heavy this was. Is this a light ball? <laughs> all right, guys, I think we get it. Or is this something really heavy? You know, if they were coming at different points, it could be something that shocks my system. So it could throw off the neurologic changes going to the brain and then back to particular muscles as to the balance of stretch and contraction. Now this is when you're really going to see somatic dysfunction. So you have afferent messages that go from the spindle to the brain saying something's going on. And then you have an efferent signal coming back that contracts. So when the system goes off balance, you already have a change in the gamma motor systems that allows for contraction. Your body just kind of has this innate ability to tighten up. It gets scared, you know, it wants to defend itself from outcoming, you know, dangers. Now, you already contract past where the system is, and it sends messages back to this intrafusal muscle spindle to go ahead and fire because the balance is shifted, and it thinks if it can catch up, then it'll put it back to neutral. Well, it doesn't work like that either, because once you have more muscle spindle firing, you just have increased contraction, and you have more and more muscle spasm, which tends to pull mechanisms out of place. So this is one of the big thought processes into what's going on, and it's actually one of the big ideas about how our treatments work. So here's an intro to the neuroreflexive properties. You guys have a little bit more to tell your patients next time than, well, it's just a chicken or an egg and look for more in-depth explanations when we get into a little treatment and the whole myofascial conflicts and fascial ligamentous release. Thanks again. We'll see you next time on Didactics Online.